We are back. Yes, we are back with BTP Let's Talk Edition. Here I'm joined with Danny as always. Hey, Danny, how's it going? My male life is wonderful, fantastic, excited, and passionate. Awesome, awesome. That sounds great. So today's topic, we're going to talk about body language. So That's right. So let me start off uh, this talk with giving you a gist of an idea of what I think about body language and we'll go on from there so that's right i have always been fascinated by body language i've um, often used it to the extent that i had readings on in the past i've been long distant from it at least consciously i mean obviously unconsciously we all talk about it uh, but then recently uh, i've became again interested in using this time with methods of nlp neural linguistic programming if I'm that's not right right um I think it's a very useful tool for the people who are, I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody at some point to one degree or the other have heard of it, has heard of it. And, but for those who might not have, I'm going to say in general, we are talking and communicating through our language, like uh, the literal language, our tongues, exactly. our voices. Um, and then there's another version of communication that is always happening. And that is through uh, your body, your 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 posture, or anything of the sort. I can even give exactly. an example. For example, your dog doesn't talk to you, but when he sits at a certain angle and looks at you a certain way, you know he's hungry or he has to go poop or whatever, right? Uh, okay. So that's kind of like... of course, I'm a, I'm a cat person, not a dog person, but yeah, I, I get your point. <laughs> I mean, you're your pet. Let's let's chill. That's right. Right. That's right. Um, so yeah, that's how my connection began it i mean my connection began in, in personally because i was so fascinated with, with people and i was like okay what are people thinking beyond what they're saying that's um, right yeah so i want you to like from here on i want to dive in and ask you basically to give a gist of general like short um definition of your definition of body language and, that's right and then we go from there bravo so Actually, you mentioned NLP because my uh, extensive study in body language actually began when I started learning uh, NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming. And in NLP, we say, of course, there's a lot of numbers back and forth. There's not an exact number here. Some say 56, some say 60, some even say 85%. But basically what it says is the majority of our communication is oftentimes done via our body language because body language is basically any form of communication that does not use a word and language. So think about like the body gestures, the way you move your face, your eye contact, uh, the way you somehow shake and how energized your body is and how well you actually can communicate your message without others listening to you. Basically, your body language is defined. If someone does not speak your language, they can understand what you're saying. So a lot of the things when it comes to body language are actually quite universal. That is, if you travel around the world, you realize even sometimes when you go to certain uh, distant tribes that are living very primitive lifestyles, they have the exact same rules of body language that actually humans uh, in very little societies do have. Mm. So ultimately, it's a universal form of communication that is quite separate and distinct from language. Because language itself is, uh, when it comes to, you know, when you look at the, you know, evolutionary biology and evolutionary psychology, language is a recent and, a, and a basically invention of humanity. So before that, we had body language. And uh, this is why ultimately body language is registered on a subconscious level to your speaker while his or her conscious mind is processing the words you're saying, which is why it's so incredibly important. If you want to improve the quality of your communication, most of your job actually will be done through your body language. Now, body language itself is not just separate from tonality, because generally speaking, we have three, in NLP we say communication has three major parts. The smallest part is called words, which is only 7% of the communication. That's right, only 7% of communication is words. The rest of that, approximately about 33%, will be your tonality. That is wow. how you use your tone. I mean, right now, for example, you just talk to me right now. Imagine I just changed my tone. It's like, so, hey there, Pujik. So we got a we got a show here, and I guess. Oh, you're very I'm nervous have here, to man. Talk about body. <laughs> I mean, literally, what happens is this is this is uh, the exact same information, but you don't even want to listen, right? Mm -hmm. And the same thing applies to the way we talk. I mean, uh, literally, think about this. Imagine like uh, I, there's somebody there, and I say, "Hey, come here." Okay, this is mm -hmm. a different meaning. What if I say? Hey, come here. These right. are very, very different meanings, man. I'm telling you, like in terms of like how the other speaker 
perceives that. Now, body language is a link to tonality in that they complete each other. Having a good body language but a bad tonality is almost impossible because your body language dictates the way you use your tonality. And these two go hand in hand and create a very high quality communication. And if you want to really improve your quality communication with the people, you have no choice but to improve both, especially body language. Right, right. Great. Yeah, it's uh, I couldn't agree with you more. And one of, while you were talking about different people with different language and having the similar or same body language, I was, I couldn't stop thinking about my father. We're in, for example, we're in a foreign country, people don't speak English. His English is not particularly good either, but he's, he can communicate somewhat. But then if the other party is not speaking English either, he would still communicate, he would like find his way home or to the hotel or whatever. I was like, oh, wow, this is like amazing. So, so yeah, exactly. As you mentioned, it's just, it's just a huge portion of our, you know, communication goes through body language, whether we know it or not. I agree with you 100%. Exactly. 100%. So let's move on from here to, um, beside the, I mean, obvious generic uh, benefits that he has, what are the specific benefits of body language or NLP, which, whichever you want to go with? I mean, they're very right. close, but then whatever. Um, what are the benefits that you would point out, a few of them? First of all, before I uh, go any further, I should mention that body language and its studies is just a small part of NLP because NLP right. is a huge science that is predominantly about three things, how you communicate with other people, how you talk and communicate with yourself, and how you use that to get results, motivate people, and move forward. So body language is a small part of NLP, right. basically. That's for this one. As for the actual benefits of focusing on studying body language, I should tell you this right now. Basically, if you have any desire to influence anyone under any circumstance, whether it is that you are a manager, you would like to work with your staff, if you are, for example, let's say you want to uh, talk to the opposite gender and to attract them, basically, whether it is you want to make friends, whatever it is, if your goal is to Im uh, improve the quality of your communication and make others listen to you, you need to work on your body language. Why is this? Like, like I mentioned earlier, body language is processed much faster and much earlier than the word itself because mm -hmm. it's processed intuitively by the other speaker and by your interlocutor and by their subconscious mind, which means that, the, that they say people oftentimes make the decision about who you are in less than four seconds of meeting you, mm -hmm. which means your body language is also part of your first impression. The way you're sitting, the way you're moving your hands and your gestures, the way you move your body, your face, all these things are being registered on a subconscious level, which means if you do not work on your body language, you simply cannot have an effective form of communication. And more importantly, you cannot influence other people because people just simply don't follow with, with your words if your body language is contradictory. Now, the other benefit, of course, of body language studies is that it allows you to read other people as well. That's the second benefit. Mm -hmm. So the first benefit was you influence others. The second is you can read other people. Because, uh, you know, after about, uh, I, I've been actually uh, studying the field of body language for about six years now. And now I can look at a person from any nationality, any gender, any age, and I can look at these people and say, how are they feeling? What do they feel about me? What is their ideas? And so on and so forth. For example, sometimes I look at a client by just the way that client is looking at me. I'm saying this client is not a serious buyer. This client is not going to buy anything. Or I right. look at a guy, for example, in, let's say, a workshop or a training, and I see this facial expression changes. And I'm not going to see this guy ever again. And guess what? Hmm. I won't. So the second benefit of understanding and developing your knowledge in the field of body language is that you understand other people. And by understanding them, you, you, can actually, you actually get who they are, their feelings, their emotions, all of these things. And a good benefit, of course, is lie detection. If you right. focus on developing your body language knowledge, then it becomes almost impossible for others to lie to you. Because when it comes to lying, there are certain biological ramifications that uh, occur when you're lying. And all of those, by the way, could be detected via body language. So uh, these are the benefits. That is, you can understand other people. You can read them. And more importantly, you won't be lied to as easily. Mm -hmm. And generally, when you work on your body language, the third benefit that I uh, can think of right now is its impact on your overall level of well-being. Mm -hmm. You see, most of our negative emotions are manifested in, our, in ourselves by body language. For example, think of the last time you were extremely depressed, mm -hmm. down on yourself. Mm -hmm. How was your body language? Was it straight up or you are somehow down? Was your breathing shallow or very strong? 
were you, was your eye, basically your eye contact with other people strong or weak? Did you tend to somehow move fast or move slowly? So once you understand body language, then it almost becomes impossible to be negative. People say, Dan, I rarely see you negative. Well, the fact of the matter is nobody ever sees me negative. The reason is because I understand body language. So even if, let's say, today something has happened that is not very okay because, I mean, that's life, right? So once you know body language, despite having heard a bad news or an economic downturn or a political problem, you simply focus, all right, let's go for a uh, body language checkup. So the head is straight up. Okay, I'm walking very strong. So you literally can change your body language. And here's the fun part. They say in LP. The mind follows the body and the body follows the mind. So if you catch yourself feeling negative, if you understand body language, and especially positive body language, then you can simply, instead of trying to change your mindset, which is very difficult, by the way, you Mm -hmm. change your body language. And guess what? Your mind follows suit and you start feeling great. So the third benefit of body language is that you can actually become the master of your emotions, and you can literally generate positive emotions every single day, 24-7 for the rest of your life, if you understand the concept very well. Simply because your brain, in order to feel negative, it requires the body to be in a certain location, in a certain way. If you do not give it to your body, if your body is not basically uh, fully uh, negative and down on itself, the brain cannot send the signals of negativity to your body. And vice versa. The moment your brain sees the body is strong, is positive, this guy's breathing very rapidly, things are pretty cool, this guy's moving fast, suddenly the brain says, oh, wait, wait, maybe maybe, maybe it's a good situation, right? Maybe I should change myself. And guess what? The brain follows suit and you feel great. So these are the top three benefits of studying and mastering body language, which is influencing others, reading other people's emotions as well as lies and whatnot. And number three, it's mastering your own emotions and allowing your brain to experience the emotions that you want by controlling your body consciously. Absolutely. Very great. It was beautiful. You mentioned um, lie detection, and I want to mention that not always people actually lie intentionally. They sometimes think they think something, but they don't. But then their unconscious mind knows better and their body language follows the unconscious mind, giving you the right clue. Sometimes, exactly. like I've personally experienced that myself quite a lot of times. And even in, even in myself, I'm like, oh, really? I thought I really thought I think this way, but apparently not because I'm behaving differently. Exactly. So, yeah, that's that's one thing about lie detection that I was uh, going to add on to your uh, your talks. And then also um, regarding um, body language impacting your mind, uh, mindset, your mood. Uh, couldn't agree more. I personally have been experimenting with this phenomenon for quite a while. And then I found enormous amount of effects to my surprise at the beginning. Right now, it's, it kind of makes sense. It's kind of intuitive. But then at, at the time, I was like, wow, this is great. Yeah, I, I mean, for example, as you mentioned, I, I was not feeling comfortable enough or confident enough. I would do, you know, a straight up open power pose. And then I would immediately or after a few seconds i would feel powerful i would feel confident i would feel yeah it's it's amazing your body at that moment is releasing different hormones man like literally by the way you move your body by the way you stand your body starts producing different hormones yep like for example if you're a male by simply having a power pose as you pointed out yourself Mm -hmm. your body begins releasing testosterone Mm -hmm. and as soon as you have a down gesture your body begins releasing uh cortisol which is a stress hormone which starts diminishing your energy level as well as self-confidence. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, it's a very interesting phenomenon. And for our audiences, whoever doesn't believe us, just do it. I, I promise you, you're going to see it. And um, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, so let's let's move on from benefits a little bit to a little bit of a more practical aspect of this, meaning, okay, how do we do this? How do we, let's be specific. How do we use to, let's say, read people, read what they think? Um, can you give a few tips about this? For sure. Well, first of all, about body language, I should mention this. Body language cannot be taught well via audio or books. Absolutely. Because part of what makes body language uh, rather difficult for most people uh, is that you need to have a lot of experience and a lot of contact with people. Now, mm-hmm. fortunately, in my job, because I have three careers, all of which are directly related to working and interacting with people almost all the time. So in such a lifestyle that I have, it becomes a lot easier. I mean, like you get the patterns very quickly because you're seeing, let's say, dozens and dozens 
of people every single day. You're interacting with them one-on-one -on -one or in groups. And so you see the patterns. However, there are basically some things that everybody can look forward to. And th the good news for body language is this. I mentioned earlier that body language is for communications. Here's the good language. Understanding the basics of body language does not require any education because it is literally wired into your DNA. That is, mm -hmm. everybody can understand. I mean, when you're with somebody, for example, and he starts to, for example, his uh, body starts to somehow get agitated. The eyes get wide open. Their mouth is open. You can guess, all right, this guy is kind of shocked, basically, right? Mm -hmm. So the good news about body language is this. There are two degrees of reading people. One we call understanding on the surface level, one we call understanding the intentions and emotional makeup. Now, here's the good news. Understanding the surface level body language does not require any training or any education. Anybody can do it. Anybody can look at someone and say, this guy is happy, this guy is sad. It's kind of obvious because we get it on an intuitive level. Right. Now, the second uh, layer, the second and, of course, a deeper layer, it requires understanding of psychology that allows you to know the intentions. For example, let's say you're a poker player and you're looking at a person who's playing poker in front of you. Mm -hmm. Now, did you know that many poker player can simply guess your move by looking at the pupils of your eyes? Mm -hmm. For example, if you're playing and let's say you're bluffing, they simply look at the pupil of your eye and see how large and large it, is, large it is right now. If it is larger than usual, that implies you're actually lying and you're scared and afraid of being caught. So these are very tiny things. Mm -hmm. When it comes to body language, generally you want to look at three major areas. Number one, the physical posture, either while sitting or while moving. That is the way the hand are put, for example, the way your legs, when you're sitting, for example, how straight your back is. So that's called the body part. Then mm -hmm. there is the hand gestures. That is the way you move your hand while you're talking, because it also has a lot of implications. Mm -hmm. And the third is about your face, particularly about your body language involving your eye contact, the way you move your lips, your all of your facial, uh, basically, gestures around the face, because they all imply a lot of emotions, basically. Mm -hmm. So these three areas are quite important. And of course, the fourth element is uh, tonality. Now, right. I myself, I'm a more, uh, basically, auditory person. So actually, before I even read the body language, I actually uh, get the tonality, because tonality itself has a vibrancy. I mean, you talk to a person, for example, and says, I ask him, like, so how was your day? And uh, he says, well... It was great, man. It was uh, <clears throat> it was a uh, very good. I'm I'm feeling very happy. You see, this person does not have a tonality that seems very happy, and it's just like, come on, you're bullshitting me. Something's going on, and say, oh yeah, actually, this happened. This happened. So ultimately, the fourth element is about bo uh, tonality. So you want to pay attention to all these four, basically. Mm -hmm. That is the physical stance and the physical movements, including your hand gestures, the face, as well as tonality. These are all parts of the things you have to pay attention to in order to understand it. Now, the details, of course, that requires personal experience. Uh, for example, you want to look at the faces of a lot of people before you can actually get uh, to know how you can read uh, their, uh, for example, uh, uh, their faces and how, more importantly, you can understand whether they're lying or not. Now, right. for that lie detection, I give you one quick tip because that one does not require a lot of practice, and that is the eye directions. You see? Uh, let me ask you something, Fujix. Uh, what do you think uh, lying really is from a neurological brain point of view? Um, so my my view on lying is that you believe in something, you do right. think something, but then you're trying to communicate something completely different to that of your knowledge or belief. That's right. Very well. Now, right. you mentioned believe. Of course, let's talk at, at a more uh, neurological, scientific level. Mm -hmm. Whether you believe something or you remember something or whatever, it simply means that information is stored in your brain via synapses. Okay. Right. So let's say you in your memory, in your brain, there are some synapses that have been stored and registered as this particular type of information. Mm -hmm. For example, let's say that you, for, let's say your boss comes in and says, okay, so did you do your reports? Do you think you'll be able ready by, let's say Monday? Mm -hmm. And you look at the, oh, basically you look at the watch and the, oh shit, I got only three days and this is a huge project. <laughs> you say, yes, boss, it's ready. So, once the, the boss asks you about the report, you access your memory, mm -hmm. and then you, uh, there you see what exactly you've done. You say, all right, we have a huge project. The boss wants to report by Monday, and I got less than three days. Right. This is not enough. 
You see, this is this information is logical, it's stored in your basically a brain. Mm -hmm. Now, when the boss asks you, don't you want to lie? What do you have to do here? Can you guess? I have to change that pattern. Or simply create a new pattern. That is, create a new story right. and then tell that story to the boss. So in your brain, you first create a story of you having done the report and then tell the boss, yeah, sure, boss, it's ready. I'll do it. Right. So basically, from an NLP point of view, lying, uh, telling the truth is when you access your memory, mm -hmm. uh, basically, and then you say it. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, lying is when you access the creative part of your brain mm -hmm. to create a false story first and then tell that story to the speaker. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, when it comes to lying, lying involves uh, one extra step than telling the truth. Right. Tell the truth is you access the memory and then you tell the memory to the other person. OK, right. Have done your report. Sorry, boss. I couldn't. You see, mm -hmm. that's direct. Mm -hmm. When it comes to lying, there's an extra pathway. And that is, first, you access the creative part. First, you access your memory. Mm -hmm. Then you realize it's nothing. Then you access the creative part of your brain, which is uh, create a story uh, narrative that is not real. And then you tell that narrative to the, to the, to the other person, which means you involve you, – lying is a creative act, ultimately. Because of this, one of the easiest way to know if somebody is lying, and anybody can do it right now, Mm -hmm. Simply, when you're looking at the other person from your point of view, that is from your perspective, when you're looking at the other person, you have to look for the eye contact and to see whether the person's eye first goes towards up and right or up and left. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of, uh, so basically, if I'm talking right now to, to, to somebody and that person is telling the truth, that person uh, looks up and right from your perspective. Because from my perspective. that's the part of the brain that needs to access the memory, which mm -hmm. means this person is retrieving his me or her memory is not creating a story. On the other hand, if from your perspective, the person's eyes is going up and left, this person is accessing the creative part of their brain, mm -hmm. which means this person is involved in creating. Now, this doesn't always mean he or she is lying. Because right. sometimes when you're, especially when you're speaking a foreign language, you have to do some of these things. But in most cases, when a person from your perspective, from your angle, looks up and left, that person is creating and making up a story, which, by the way, that's a lie. So to make it simple to remember, R is right, L is lie. I repeat, R is right, L is lie. So uh, when you look at uh, up and when the, uh, when the other person's uh, basically eye is up and right, that person is telling the truth. When it's up and left, L stands for lie, in case you want to remember as a mnemonic, mm -hmm. that person is probably lying. Of course, that's one of the techniques. There are many other techniques about lie detection, but that's just one of the ones that anybody can just apply from today. However, be careful, because once I first learned about this, the <laughs> first few days, I was a little bit depressed. Uh, let's, just, let's just say that. Uh, it, was, it was a very uh, tough uh, red pill to swallow, if you will, but right. you, you eventually get used to it. No, absolutely. It, it makes a lot of sense. And I think I think I want to add on to that in terms of lying, that you can also use the same technique, which I, I did a few times. It's, it's actually harder on yourself. Use it on yourself, basically, meaning that we all we tend to as, as a species to justify ourselves. We tend to lie to ourselves sometimes. Um, and you can c catch yourself, you know, on the spot as well, sometimes with your own body That's language, right. with your own Again, where are you looking at, uh, even when you're talking to yourself? Because everybody does talk to themselves. Not out loud necessarily, but you do communicate with yourself, basically. Of course. So, so yeah, I mean, as a, as a, as a little bonus, it's, it's actually harder, I guess, um, because it's, it's you. And if you're t intending to lie to yourself, if you're intending to convince yourself, it's, it's going to take a lot of effort to consciously move it. But anyhow. Um, exactly. <laughs> uh, moving on to, so, so this was basically us trying to, read people let's call it that and um, now right. let's let's move to a different step now i want to correct or modify let's say my own body language to give a certain impression give a good impression um impress per some person or communicate something specific uh, what are the things what are the examples you have for that and tips? very well so when it comes to sending a message to their person Mm -hmm. Your body language, each gesture usually has some messages. Now, in order to uh, somehow divide them into different categories, the major categories of body language are as follows. Either it is dominant 
or it is submissive. Either it is positive or negative. Either it is uh, energ energized, energetic, or it is calm and peaceful. Uh, either it is sincere and friendly, or it is uh, basically with animosity. Mm -hmm. So these are different categories. For example, let's say that you are talking to a person and you put your and you cross your hands backwards, okay? Like you literally, kind of like these police officers, mm -hmm. and you look at the person with your hands behind your back. Mm -hmm. Now, by doing this on an evolutionary level, you are exposing your vital organs. That is, you're exposing your neck, which can be cut off. Again, we're talking about like evolutionary level here, right? Exactly. So in the past, we had like animals and whatnot, and knives and whatnot. So once you uh, once your hands are behind your back. Your head is straight up, which means you're exposing your neck to the other person, and you have a very, uh, you know, uh, dominant gesture. You are telling the person that I have exposed my neck, my abdomen, and my groin to you without covering anything. Mm -hmm. Can you guess what this means? I'm not scared of you. You can't do me any I harm. I am not scared of you. You can't do shit. Okay. Right. <laughs> now, again, this is registered on a subconscious level. You can do the same thing and talk very politely. You're not saying you can't do shit in that. You simply are looking directly by this is being registered because you're exposing your vital organs to the person as a sign of dominance and lack of fear. Now, on the other hand, I'm sure you know this common gesture where people literally kind of like these soccer players where they hold their hands in front of their groins, basically. Right, right. So imagine the same person who holds his hand in front of his groin and then looks down on the ground. What does this imply? Oh, now, now he's scared. It's uh, now he's, he's protecting he's his he's, he's protecting his <laughs> neck by looking downwards, right? And he's trying to protect his abdomen and groin. This is a sign of I am scared of you. This is a sign of, of, of being uh, submissive. That is, mm -hmm. uh, you are showing the other person I'm afraid of you, basically, right? Right. So this is one example of dominance versus submissiveness. The other point is about the way you move your facial expression. Is it positive or negative? Oftentimes, positive body language involves agreeableness and friendliness. Mm -hmm. Things like a strong handshake, things like a great smile, strong and friendly eye contact. Because we have two types of strong eye contact. One is the one that creeps you out, right. if you know what I'm talking about, like ogling oh, and stuff like that. One right. is that is it, it implies friendliness and connection, right? So these are all part of the factor, basically. The third element is about your energy level. How energized, how vibrant, how potent your body is. Are you sick and ill? Ill, or do you tend to somehow uh, ex uh, somehow exert and uh, express yourself as a very healthy, vibrant, and energetic person? Because we tend to hang out with we like to hang out with people who are more healthy, who are more energized, oh, who yeah. are more exuberant. Basically, this is very important, particularly with respect to dating and romance. This mm -hmm. part is very important. Mm -hmm. The other point, of course, is about your level of confidence. Ultimately, once when you exhibit a dominant body language that is friendly and positive, you come off as very confident. Because confident people, why are they confident? Because they have no fear. You see, confidence, in, in, very, in, a, in a simple sense, is the exact opposite of discomfort. So the more comfortable you seem, that is, the more comfortable your body language uh, seems like in front of other people, the more confident you are. Now, in the United States, for example, more people are afraid of public speaking then they are afraid of death. Can you believe that? It's just, wow. it's unbelievable. So what happens when you put this guy on, on a stage, just talking in front of a you know, large audience? How comfortable do you think he or she will feel? Starts shaking, so nervous, Feeling. the hands, all those things. Right. Exactly. On the other hand, you put a professional speaker on the stage. He won't even think about the speech he's making. He just think he's talking to the audience while in the back of his mind, he's thinking, okay, I gotta go get this one. So like for him, it's all automatic, right? Mm -hmm. So confidence is uh, from a body language point of view, is the exact opposite of discomfort. The more comfortable you look for the other person, for the other person, uh, the more confident you appear. For example, think you're on a date with a beautiful girl. Right. If you are the kind of guy who has never been on a date with a hot girl before, so you tend to be very discomfortable. You start sweating, you talk very fast, and then your voice, your tonality changes, and you don't know what to say, all those things, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine, on the other hand, another guy who has gone on a, you know, quite a few dates. When he goes on a date, he sits relaxed back on the chair and then looks at the eyes of the girl and says, so, what up? 
Talk right. about yourself. This is a very different thing because this, this guy is comfortable. You know, mm-hmm. this guy is comfortable in his own skin. So ultimately, body language uh, and how comfortable your body language is shows your level of self-confidence. So these are all factors that ultimately determine how you can uh, send a different message. The last one I want to mention, because there's a lot, we, you know, I don't think we can even cover one tenth of it in this uh, in this podcast. But yeah, uh, it's about your hands. Hands are very important because in the past we used to hide a lot of basically weapons and stuff. For example, Fujix, do you know the philosophy behind handshake? Actually, I don't. Well, in the past, if you remember, uh, if you're familiar with, uh, for example, the franchise Assassin's Creed and the knife they used to hide oh, in their hands. Right. So in the past, people carried their knives. Just like, uh, you know, these assassins in the back of the base on, on, on their uh, forearm, basically, mm-hmm. or in their hand. So whenever they met someone, they, uh, the, the original handshake was not with the, basically the palm of your hand. It was actually with a forearm. Right. So people would grab each other's forearm to see if there's any weapon concealed or not. Right. And this eventually became a tradition that everybody followed. Mm-hmm. And nowadays, since we don't carry knives under, on our forearms, we simply, uh, do the handshakes with the with the palm of our hands right. so ultimately that's a sign of friendliness that is i'm not a danger you see mm-hmm. so for example on most presentations if you show the palm of your hand the other person all the research shows that the other person begins to trust you more because wow. on a subconscious level uh, on a dna level he thinks you don't have any weapon you're not a threat and that person trusts you more these are amazing stuff like that. the body language studies man they have shocked the hell out of me like it's unbelievable like your eye contact all of these factors have more to influence than anything for example in field of sales most sales will say like man i should just cut the cost man i say don't worry don't cut the cost increase the cost but do a good sales presentation because ultimately research proves that people buy from sales people that, that are popular and that people like much more even if they have high prices than the sales people who simply don't know what they're doing with their body language but have low prices. Mm-hmm. So ultimately, these are all about influence. And these were some of the examples I could give you right now. But ultimately, understand this. The field of body language is like an ocean. You can literally swim forever. <laughs> and you can always find something new. And if people in this uh, in this uh, basically uh, podcast or listen to our podcast are interested, there are a lot of resources available online and many books about how to read different gestures that accompany photos. And if it's online, also videos to show you exactly how to read different types of body language and how to express yourself as well. Right. I couldn't agree with you more. Every every single thing that I learned about body language to this date has blown me away to a degree unimaginable. Um, That's right. Something else you mentioned that I wanted to point out, you mentioned that we like to be, tend to be around energetic people, people with lots and lots of energy, and then we get energetic as a result. And that, that um, we can refer back to our previous talk saying, when you change your own body language, you feel better. Think about it. Somebody else's body language is, and, and, and energy is influencing you to feel better. Think about how your own body language and energy can influence your exactly. own self. So that's another, you know, proof of the concept. Um, that's right. Let's um, let's move on to a little bit, like starting to wrap up our talk. And that's right. We talked about different benefits, different ways to read people and give impressions of ourselves. Overall, what are the tips you give our audiences in order to? Um, learn more, of course, but at the same time, improve their skills. Personally, I think one of the most important aspects is definitely practice. I mean, there's no other thing, like there's nothing to replace practice with. But Absolutely. in general, what are the things that you're going to go and uh, help? What are the things that you've done to help you improve your skills? Let's say that. That's right. Well, if you ask my friends, they know that I don't do much texting of any kind, that is texting back and forth, smileys, whatnot. Mm -hmm. The answer is very simple. Most of the people in the modern world are spending more and more time communicating via text messages, which is just, I told you earlier, guys, words are only 7% of the communication. So if you spend most of your time texting, you are literally running at 7% efficiency in terms of communication most of the time. Mm -hmm. So limit your texting and instead engage in face-to-face interactions. Mm-hmm. I myself, I prefer phone call over text. Can you guess why, Pujish? I, I, I rarely text, if at all, 
And if I do text, it's probably just, just, just for arrangements. Like I'll see you at this time or this, that, that. Right, right. It's never for communications. Can you guess why I like phone call a lot more than I like texting? Right, because your tonality is missing. In, exactly. In and we mentioned tonality is at least 20, 25% of the communication. So when I'm talking yeah. to a person on the phone, I can understand him or her. But mm-hmm. on a text, I can't do that, you see? And I like to understand people. So number one, limit your texting. Limit your screen time. And instead, start interacting with people on a face-to-face basis. Trust me. I'm telling you right now, most of your body language knowledge comes from experience, and that requires you to have face-to-face contact. Unfortunately, this is on – basically, in our modern world today, it's actually quite uh, limited, and most of us are not spending enough time interacting with others face-to-face. We're just texting back and forth. So what I did for myself, I said, from now on, for me, texting – is not a means of communicating. It's a means of arranging things. So let's say, for example, I want to go out and I want to invite my friend. I just say, all right, I'm going to go this time, this and this day. Are you ready? Good. Thank you. Goodbye. So I don't just uh, sit down and say, so hello, smiley. How are you doing today? Smiley. <laughs> oh, nice. Smiley. I don't do these things, right? So I, I limit my texting to either business only or arrangements so that I can actually communicate uh, face-to-face most of the time. Secondly, of course, it's about understanding the ins and outs of body language by studying the feel of, uh, you know, body language. So there are so many books out there about this concept that I can even like, uh, there are so, just, if you Google body language or if you just go to a bookstore and just look for the body language section, you find so many books, you'll be surprised that, oh my gosh, these guys, I mean, please stop it already. We're just, uh, uh, dying of having so many all these uh, yeah. goddamn books, basically. By the so, way, there's so literally a body language section in bookstores. Just, just yes, in case people didn't believe it. <laughs> that's right. It is. It is just unbelievable, man. Because yeah. it's uh, very critical. And in most bookstores, either they have a body language section, or they simply have. They usually put these books in the uh, either psychology or mm-hmm. business sector because right. these are very important, man. These are quite important. Absolutely. And of course, thirdly, is becoming more aware. Once you're talking, because when most people are talking to to each other, they are just busy coming up with the next phrase they want to say instead of actually focusing on the other speaker. Mm -hmm. So in your communications, give at least half of your attention on looking, analyzing, and understanding the body language of the other person. Is that person agitated or is he or she comfortable? How, how, how does he or she talk? Uh, Is the sitting posture relaxed and comfortable? Does he or she occupy a lot of space, which is a sign of dominance, mm-hmm. or does he or she try to occupy as less space as possible, which is a sign of submissiveness? So when you're talking, don't just focus on the words and the stories, because let's be honest, a lot of us, we are blind to body language. We don't even look at it. Of course, not on a, uh, basically on a subconscious level, we all read it, but not on a conscious level. So right. you want to uh, somehow dedicate a part of your conscious processing to actually reading and analyzing the body language. And trust me, over time, the patterns emerge and you start to read people even without studying. However, if you do study the subject uh, in depth, you will benefit immensely from basically this pursuit. It's wonderful. Great, great. Fantastic. It's lovely. All right. uh, I think we're almost at the end of our um, talk today about body language. Do you have any final tips or final comments about the whole concept? For sure. Understand this, guys. Your body language speaks much louder and much more clear than any amount of word you use. I know a lot of people who are very well, who are very literate. They have a lot of great knowledge and they talk very well, but they have such, <clears throat> how should we call this? Uh, such terrible body language, <laughs> to use a polite word, that the speaker doesn't even want to listen to them. Like, especially a lot of professors actually like, like, ladies and gentlemen, I got to tell you something right now. We please, if you take a look at a board, we I mean, come oh, on. Oh, sometimes dude. being monotone. I just want to go to bed. Oh my God. I just yeah. want to go to, I just want to go to bed right now. Seriously. Like, yeah. this is just very important to focus on improving that body language because ultimately people will understand and read you much more by your body language than your words ever will. And also for those who are learning foreign languages, understand this, that ultimately your body language shows much more about your level of fluency than your actual knowledge of that language. I mean, once I was having this conversation with a lady, a French lady, and uh, as most of you guys might know, my knowledge of French is uh, literally dismal, to say the, <laughs> you know, the least. And uh, it probably is at a Tarzan level or something. Probably Tarzan wow. would speak and communicate better uh, in this field than I do. But guess what? 
I remember at that time I was talking to this lady and my entire uh, vocabulary knowledge in French perhaps was, let's say, 50 or 60 words of this most simple, of course, the simplest words of all. Right. But since I was using my body language in, in the correct and in a, a confident manner, I simply asked questions, let the other person talk as much as possible while me understanding practically nothing. <laughs> but by that thing, she was. we talked for like 20 minutes in French. Right. And guess what? At the end, she said... You're so fluent. I've never talked to any, any foreigner like this before. Man, it's so great. Wow. Guess what? Because that's body language at play, man. Because that right. woman got such a positive body language, felt like she's talking to a guy who just knows everything, right? So in every aspect, in speaking a foreign language, in sales, in business, in romance, in dating, it's very important, especially if you're a guy. Because girls usually are much better at both 100%. reading body language and exhibiting it. But unfortunately, most guys, we are not well developed in this field. So if you're a guy and you want to succeed with women on dating, then you need to improve your body language because girls are great readers of body language and they can read every little detail, every little sign. So that's going to help you a lot as well. Ultimately, if you want to succeed at communication, you need body language. I repeat, if you want to succeed at communication, you need body language. Thanks. Thanks very much, Dan. It's uh, it's a, it's definitely an amazing field, and it's a very useful one, of course. Um, whether you want to read people, whether you want to you want to influence people, or whatever you want to do, really, as as Dan mentioned, more than fifty percent of our communication, sixty whatever, is body language, and of the vocal part, only seven percent are actually the words that you're saying. Although they Actually. do matter, but the the way you say it, it's definitely much more important than what you say. Um, so in, any, in any case, uh, this was a very fantastic and phenomenal uh, episode of our Let's Talk version. And uh, hope to see you guys later. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And uh, guys, if you like it, please rate us on iTunes. If you're listening to us on iTunes, comment. Um, if you, if you want to get in contact with us, comment on, on our shows. We're going to, uh, definitely get back to you. Tell us if you have any other topics in mind you want to, you want us to talk about. Hammer, like we did this one and the previous ones. And tune in next week.